you'll, you'll hear things like nerve damage or you'll hear things like blood loss and other things thrown about, about between high-level colleagues talking about advantages and disadvantages of different approaches. I think to be straightforward and honest about you know, the ANTI approach, the, uh, one of the biggest critiques of it is, is nerve injury. And at the high level, when we talk about it uh, at conferences, we talk about this injury to a nerve called the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Now, the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve is a sensory nerve, and it, it goes across the front of the hip, and it goes down and innervates the top of the thigh. And there are now quite a few studies out there that show there's an incidence of lateral femoral cutaneous nerve injury as a consequence of anterior approach uh, hip replacement. This nerve injury is generally a sensory injury only, which means it's typically limited only to sensation to the top of the thigh. It doesn't interfere with motor um, function, meaning it, it's not a motor nerve. It doesn't control whether your foot goes up and down or you're, you can straighten or walk or move your leg. But it does innervate the top of the thigh, and so it does lead to some sensory disturbances right after surgery. Now, most of these sensory disturbances are self-limited meaning they resolve on their own. By three months, the patient has had recovery of the nerve function. There's a small subset of patients, probably about 15%, that have some permanent numbness going down to the top of the knee. It's hard to predict, but one of the things that we know is more complex cases, heavier patients where there's more retraction required, those are cases where we're going to get more uh, neuropraxia type uh, type injuries. And neuropraxia means just stretching of the nerve. The motor nerve uh, incidence is actually very, very low with this procedure, but it's probably on par with other approaches as well. Other approaches cite uh, varying levels of motor nerve injury. And in my practice, it's about one in a thousand. But it's, it's those also in my practice have been self-limited. When we did get a motor nerve injury, they were typically self-limited, uh, meaning they resolved on their own. But it can happen where one can be permanent. And these are things that are important to disclose during surgery. I mean, it's when you're doing a surgical consultation, you have to let people know that there is this risk. But thankfully, the risk is very, very low. One of the ways of mitigating the risk is making sure you're going to an experienced surgeon. I mean, seriously, you're, the more time you spend doing this, the less risk you have of, of these kind of injuries. And these injuries can be you know, profound in their effect on somebody's life.